About three months before Angelinos head to the polls to pick their choice to replace L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. One of those candidates, L.A. City Councilman Joe Buscaino, joins us now. He represents the city's 15th district, which includes the Harbor area and Watts. Councilman Buscaino, thanks so much for being with us. Good to see thanks, you. Thanks, Jessica, for having me, Frank. Good to see you. Welcome. And just a note to our viewers, too, we will be reaching out to all of the candidates throughout the election, but we want to start with homelessness this morning. Biggest issue of the election, something that has dominated your tenure on the city council, first as you see it. What is causing the city's homelessness crisis? Well, what's causing the homelessness crisis here in Los Angeles is not moving quickly on emergency shelter, Jessica. We here in Los Angeles have been focused on $800,000 apartment doors, which takes two to four years to build while people are dying and destroying themselves on the streets. And I, here in my district, have a proven model. In fact, Lauren Lister covered it not too long ago on how to get it done. I've shown the action. We've housed nearly half the people living on the sidewalks by moving on emergency shelter. And that's my plan as mayor. Within a 36 month period, move on 9,000 emergency shelter beds. And at the same time, offer a zero camping law in the city of Los Angeles. That, that's what is proven model here in Los Angeles. We've been a city that's been welcome, a welcoming map for homeless to pitch a tent, shoot up drugs and have no consequences. One of your uh, proposals involves docking the pay of some city leaders who you say don't do enough on this issue of homelessness, including the mayor. Um, it's a provocative uh, idea. Uh, is it a serious way to address the homelessness crisis? Is it something that allows us to work together uh, on the issue? Yeah, polling will tell you that residents in Los Angeles are fed up uh, and there's zero accountability. And that's Part of my safer streets uh, measure uh, that I'm going to the ballot because my colleagues don't agree with me on how to address homelessness based on my successes here is that if we're not meeting certain thresholds, we dock the pay of the mayor all the way down to the city council, similar to what we do in the state legislature when they don't um, um, approve the budget on time, they dock their pay. Um, we, we need to move urgently. And I can't believe that our emergency operations center is not even activated. We have an emergency on our streets. And as a first responder at LAPD for many years, I've come at this lens of, of moving with urgency in my district. That's why we have proven the model and why I want to take the citywide as your next mayor. You uh, mentioned it. You have uh, been arguing for this for a while now for stronger anti-camping ordinances. I think many Angelinos will believe there's nothing compassionate to see people suffering from mental illness, drug addiction on our streets. It's not safe. Uh, homeless advocates, though, call your proposals counterproductive. They say they're even cruel towards the homeless. So how do you respond to that? And then you, you mentioned emergency shelter, getting enough of that done, because if people are camping on our streets, they have to go somewhere. Um, and then also, do you have a plan for helping with mental illness and drug addiction as well? Jessica, the, the advocates I question oftentimes, it's cruel to leave someone dying on our streets and our sidewalks. Uh, words of compassion. Uh, the, the, ad, uh, the advocates are, are demanding apartments. You know, we need permanent supportive housing, but we need to fix the problem now. Um, we also need to recognize, and this is what, I'm, what I've done in my district. You know, my opponents are going to be talking about their plan. And, I, uh, you know, look at what I've done. First and foremost, I'm the only candidate on record that has called for the reform of mental health, called for the reform of Prop 47. We have people on the streets who are not in the right mind frame to say yes to help. And I have my opponents who've been in positions of leadership at the state and federal level to fix it, and they failed. Why aren't we asking for more conservatorship, something that I've been on record for? And as mayor, I'm going to use my position to march on Sacramento uh, and, and call for the reform of mental health, the reform of Prop 47, because we're not, we're doing a disservice for folks who are not in the right mind frame to say yes to help. So I push back against that false narrative that I'm criminalizing. I'm actually helping people. In fact, Lauren, uh, one of your reporters, Lauren Lister, she interviewed one of all the ladies who was in the shelter and she said, thank you to CD15. Thank you to Councilman Buscaino, he saved my life. Um, you also want to get rid of the county's homelessness agency. You say that'll free up $330 million a year to get people off the street. Um, assuming you got your way, 
what agency would pick up that slack and wouldn't that be reinventing the wheel uh, when it comes to dealing with homelessness? So we have to ask ourselves, <laughs> is the problem getting better working with the LA Homelessness Services Authority? Question is no. The city uh, transferred over to the county $330 million. Uh, I, I can house people living on the street within a 36 month period with the $330 million. It, 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 LASA is top heavy. We're lining the pockets of the executive and not helping people on the street. I'm the only candidate for mayor who is calling to divorce from LASA. We know the county is responsible for services. We know the city is responsible for housing. So the city can do its own and do its own part. We're not reinventing the wheel. We actually know the issue. Uh, and by the same token, LASA has not given us real-time data. I've, I've been begging to for LASA to give us a real-time data, who's saying yes to help, who's saying no to help, and why are they saying no to help? So there's no transparency there. So this is why the, the city and the residents and businesses are fed up um, and, and why I'm calling for the divorce uh, of LASA. One of your uh, rivals running for Mayor Rick Caruso has criticized candidates with prior time in elected office like yourself for failing the city on homelessness. Is he wrong about that? And are voters wrong for wanting to try someone who isn't already tied to City Hall? Yeah, again, um, uh, I, I share uh, Rick's um, frustration. I have actually had a front row seat of, of you know, the, the issues of homelessness. And I've been calling on my colleagues to follow my lead on what needs to be done. I, mean, I encourage your, your viewers to come to my district, come to San Pedro. Um, and see what we've done on Beacon Street, on Avalon in Wilmington, on Imperial in, in Watts. Uh, again, uh, oftentimes, um, you know, the, the issue of leadership and being bold is not taking place in City Hall. Uh, I am not, I've been a maverick on City Council. I've not agreed with my colleagues uh, on certain policies, but I can tell you, as mayor, we're going to restore some sensibility and balance the city of Los Angeles because some of these policies have failed. And I've been on record warning my colleagues, if we move this direction, we'll continue to see the demise of our quality of life in Los Angeles. And I've been right all along. Another quality of life issue is crime. Last week, the LA Police Protective League uh, endorsed Rick Caruso for mayor. You talked about it. You served in the LAPD, I believe, for 15 years. You're still a reserve officer. Why did the union that represents your fellow officers choose to endorse Rick Caruso instead of one of their own for mayor, especially one that you claim is anti-union? Yeah, unfortunately, I think money is going to play, play a critical role in this, unfortunately. But, Frank, my brothers and sisters in LAPD, they support me. I'm so blessed. I was inundated with calls and voice messages. You may have seen postings on social media questioning uh, the political arm of the police union. Uh, we're going to have a huge uh, uh, law enforcement cops for Buscaino rally in Elysian Park on, on March 19th, and I encourage all your viewers, viewers to join us. It, it, it's, it comes down to, unfortunately, politics. I've blessed. I've actually pinned this badge, the LAPD badge, honorably for 15 years at reserve the last 10 years. I'm the only candidate who put on a bulletproof vest. Uh, I, I'm a public servant. And I responded to 911 calls. None of those, none of the candidates for running for mayor can, can, can say that. And I know damn well in my heart that I've got the support of the rank and file and that, that matters most to me. We want to ask you uh, before you go about LA County District Attorney George Gascon. You've endorsed the recall effort against him. Give us your reasons for wanting to see him out of office. Also answer, uh, why is it okay to remove someone from office who is democratically elected and is pursuing the policies that he campaigned on? Uh, Jessica, uh, I appreciate the question. First and foremost, I'm not big on recalls. But when you have a district attorney who's not doing his job, you know, we, we elect the district attorney to prosecute crimes. Um, and, and he's not doing that. I'm going to be the mayor that's going to actually stand up for victims and not coddle the criminals. We need to prioritize the safety of everyone and stand up for victims of crime. And that's the mayor of Miami. When 98% of his own employees support getting rid of their boss, that sends a message. And I've been right all along. Uh, again, this campaign, you're, you're going to see the difference uh, between uh, different experiences, um, again, coming from the street level. 
Uh, and I'm going to be the mayor that's going to push back uh, against um, softening crime and supporting victims. Look at our city today. The message is being sent to the criminals on the street. Do the crime and not be held accountable. Yeah. That's not the city that I know and love. In fact, women today are in, spending a lot of money on, on MACE, and they are afraid to walk the streets. We're going to change the direction as your next mayor. Councilman uh, Buscaino, uh, also candidate now for mayor. We appreciate your time, sir. Thanks very much for coming on. Frank, Jessica, thanks so much for having me. Thank All you. All right, have a wonderful day. And we want to tell our viewers that uh, we will continue to uh, interview the uh, candidates for mayor. Uh, next week, Congresswoman and mayoral candidate Karen Bass will be joining us.